the sections entitled Cluster Maintenance, Understand Kubernetes Cluster Upgrade Process. So the first thing we can do is, uh, before we do an upgrade of, of a cluster, let's just recall how we've determined the version of our cluster. So one is, the command is uh, kube cuddle version. And this will tell the version of the server itself. It's the second entry here. And I can see I'm running on 1.16.8. Okay. Um, the other thing is the nodes themselves can have different version than the cluster, right? The control plane. And so you can tell the versions of the nodes by do kube cuddle get nodes. And the version is this number after here. Okay. So that's how you tell the current version. Right, and there is um, a mechanism to upgrade your cluster. Right now, uh, right now I'm running on an EKS cluster. So in this case, I'm going to follow Amazon's um, processes. Right, um, and they maintain their uh, own like like availability. What versions are currently available? So for example, um, the current version. But this version of Kubernetes is 1.18. And you can see that right now Amazon is only supporting up to 1.16. Okay. And the idea is um, you know, Amazon does their own vetting and applies, you know, the couple versions lagging, right? And they also provide their own instructions for upgrading the cluster that are very distinct than if you were doing it managing the cluster more directly. Right. And I'm not going to go through the the instructions here, the, their instructions are fairly clear and it is um, pretty straightforward. doesn't require a lot of specific knowledge. It's basically just copying and pasting and running some, pushing some buttons. Okay. So I'm not going to go through that. Um, on the other hand, we do want to learn about, um, we do want to learn about how to um, upgrade clusters, just maybe more generically using our cube ADM installed cluster. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, um, is you know when you read through the documentation on on um, upgrading your cluster using cube ADM, right, or from a QDM Q, cube ADM installed cluster, um, the first thing it says is well you should take a backup of your etcd database, right, which is not something that they recommend in the EKS documentation. And so this, the, 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 the observation there is, it seems like if you Google around a little bit, the general argument for not worrying about taking backups, like specifically for say EKS or any cluster for that matter, is it's a best, pract it's a best practice to use declarative configuration files to drive your Kubernetes configuration, right? So that in that case, your backup is essentially your, your source controlled YAML files. And the idea would be is if you bring up a new cluster, you would just then deploy all of your configuration files against that cluster, and you've essentially restored the database based on the original source code. And so the idea is you don't want to back, in that case, the idea is you don't really want to rely on the backup database itself. You're relying on your original source code as the source of truth. So that's an argument against worrying about um, backing up your Etsy database. But since they mentioned it in the docs, I wanted to go through um, exercise with our, uh, our cube ADM um, installed cluster doing an exercise of backing up that database uh, just so we know, we know how to do it if we had to do it. Uh, again, this does not work on EKS because on EKS we don't have direct access um, that we do Oops, uh, that we do in our in our own cluster. So the first step here is we need to log into our cluster. Uh, so I've started up, um, I've gone in here and I've started up my my cluster, and I have both clusters actually running right now. I need to turn off one of them, but uh, that's that's something for later. Um, actually, it's. No, it's bothering me. I'm still running the other cluster. So I'm gonna let me let me um, pause the video and get rid of my EKS cluster first, and then we'll work with my other cluster. So now, now I just I'm running my um, 
this is my my custom cluster here that I'm running on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log in to the master node of that cluster where I have the cube ADM tool configured, right? So I already think I have it in my yeah. So I'm I'm logging into that that um, node, right? Um, so I'm sitting here, and then uh, cube control get nodes. So I have two nodes, one's master, one's not. Um, anyway, so I'm, I'm on my, and this is not, this is not my uh, AWS EKS. This is my, my cube ADM installed cluster. Okay. Um, what are we doing here? Oh, okay. So in order to work with the Etsy database directly, there's a separate tool that is not provided um, when you install the cluster. And it's called um, etcd, uh, what is it called? It's called etcd control. So it's a way of controlling the Etsy database. So we can have to download it. So it's available. There's a, you know, a GitHub repository for etcd. And I just went to the latest release of it. And I'm just downloading it, right? So that's what I'm going to do first. Uh, paste that here. So I have a tar file here, tar xvf at cd okay I remove the tar file okay so in here there's a file called etcd control and that's the file that you want to use to control the database um, now this tricky about this is that the usage of this is a little bit mm, tricky I guess is the best way of describing it so let me show you the command we need to use which is pretty horrible looking so um, I'm gonna look, this is the command we're going to use. I'm going to copy and paste it, and then just kind of walk you through the, the, the idea of it, at least. And now, OK, so th on top of everything else, I'm going to have to go to sudo, um, because some of the files, well, I'm just walk, I'm, I went sudo, and make sure I got my command right. Yeah. I'm going to paste it, but not run it. Okay, so the way to use this command is the first. Confu oh man! Okay, the first confusing thing here you got to do is you have to supply environment variable telling which version of the API this this command line tool is going to use. So that's what that first bit is. Um, I'm running this as root, but I download the folder from my Ubuntu user, so that I have to run the command kind of more direct. I mean, there's different ways of doing this, but I'm running the command from that directory, right? Okay, and then. To make things more confusing, this thing, uh, this tool needs to talk to the Etsy database, and it, but Etsy database is not wide open. It's actually secured with um, some certificates, right? And these are the certificates we're going to need to use, right? You need to use um, Kubernetes when it gets installed. It gets a CA certifi um, certificate, and one thing that's tricky here, there's actually, this is different than the normal CA certificate that you have under PKI. This is the Etcetera D CA certificate. I spent at least two, three hours confused about that yesterday. Um, so the idea is this is the certificate that created the, uh, the authentication certificates. And then the authentication certificate it, we're going to use is the same one that the API server uses to talk to etcd. Okay. So... Um, this is actually ultimately how you have to supply your credentials to talk to the server. Um, I'm right now, I'm just, I just wanted, I was debugging, so I left debugging uh, messages in here. And the endpoint is, so the Etsy database exposes itself on port 239 on the local host. And for now, I'm just going to run endpoint status, and it's going to tell me um, the status of the server, and which is really just this bottom line. This is basically saying that it's running, right, on it. The rest of this top stuff is actually debug information. So basically, bottom line is that means that I can talk to the Etsy database from um, the command line, this command line tool. OK, so now that I've talked to it, I want to back up the database. And the good news, it's just another command. It's basically the same structure command, except for the last line is different. So let me paste this in. And we can look at it. So this says, same top part, just says snapshot, save, and then you, you give it a file name. You push that, 
and you just basically dumped out a database. This uh, file right here, how big is it? It's a 3.1 megabyte file, and it's a snapshot of the database, Etsy database. And if you wanted to just kind of validate that, uh, like what's in that, there's a way of dumping sort of a status of it. And we'll see if we can do this. If I paste this, this is basically, you don't have to talk to the database to do this because you're just reading out that snapshot file and you're just writing out sort of a status of it. And, I th you know, this is the size of it, which we already observed. It tells you there's a, this is a key value database. So it has 1190 keys. That's about all I really, the point is it's a valid file is the point. And now the point of the snapshot here is this snapshot is something that you can then store off your box and store it somewhere else, right? Uh, obviously securely because it has pretty much your entire cluster configuration in it. And if all, worst comes to worst and you want to quickly restore your cluster, you can bring your cluster back up to a, some point and then use the same tool to restore the database, right? And now, and there's some instructions in their um, official Kubernetes documentation about some precautions to make around this. But you essentially can restore your, um, your Kubernetes cluster back to the same state as when you took your snapshot. So I, again, this may not be necessary if you're managing everything with configuration files and don't have anything stored directly in Kubernetes, which is probably the best practice anyway, but it was worthwhile seeing. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so, okay, now let's get on to um, actually upgrading the cluster, right? Now the instructions are given in a separate document called Upgrading KubeADM Clusters, right? And I'm just gonna go through this, um, this document quickly and summarize some of the key steps. Uh, again, I've, unfortunately, I just installed my cluster again recently, and I'm already running on the latest version, which we'll see through this process, uh, in which case I'm not gonna actually do an upgrade, but you'll see kind of what the deal is. So the first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna have to toggle between Windows here. Um, okay. Oh, right. So the first thing you want to do is determine available versions. And there's uh, actually we'll do this. There is what you do is you go in your cluster, you do apt update, uh, apt get update, and this will basically download the latest versions of all of the. Doesn't download the actual archives, but the, maybe the metadata for all the all the available um, packages you can install. And then there's a command, and I'll just type it and explain it. What this does is basically, it's running this app cache, which is basically listing out the caches that include kubeadm. And this Madison business, I had to look it up. It's basically just a format. So this is like a, a historical format, a tabular view. So it just makes it easier to read. In fact, if I just did, I'm curious now to think about it. If I just did apt cache cube ADM. Oh, I guess you, okay, I guess you have to do that in Madison. There must be an app cache like list or something for it. But this is basically giving a listing of everything that's cube ADM in a nice tabular format. And you can see the, all the versions here, the latest version being eight. 118.3, which is, I believe, what I'm currently running anyway. But you can see these are all the versions of kubeadm. That there's quite a few versions available, right? So you look for the newest one, decide whether or not you need to upgrade. Okay, enough of that. What's next? Oh, so the next step, assuming you want to do an upgrade, the next thing you want to do is you want to uh, upgrade. You, you log in your control plane. I mean, that's where I'm already on right now. And you're going to work with one control plane at a time. So there's instructions here on upgrading here, on upgrading kubeadm, right? So and that's what this this business here is. Now the reason why this I'm going to talk about it now, I guess, this holding business. The idea is that if you were to try to just do an app get upgrade, and you want to just upgrade like all the OS level. Um, tools on your cluster, right? You don't necessarily, when you do that, you don't necessarily want to upgrade kubeadm. 
So what you're doing, when, when QBADM is installed, it's marked as being held or on hold, right? And what that does is, if you ever just do a blanket uh, upgrade without specifically unholding it, um, then you will not actually upgrade QBADM. So that, that, that way that allows for upgrades of your OS separately from your QBADM upgrades, bottom line. So the way you upgrade QBDM is you have to unhold it, then you install it, and then you put it back on hold. Okay, long story short, that's why that's all there. So, and then, of course, you can see which version of QBDM you're running, right? Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is, and we can actually do this. Actually, method I will do this. Um, what you want to do is, since you're, run, since you're running on, you know, you don't want any workload on the node that you're working on, right? So I'm on my control plane. Um, I want to offload anything that's running on it. And the way you do this is there's a command is to drain it. So exit, let's see, I believe the command is, it's a cube control drain. You give a name of the node. In this case, I want to leave the daemon sets running, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore them. If I do this, um, right, right. So basically, it's gonna, and you see, it's even telling you what it's gonna do. It's gonna say, it's telling you that it's ignoring certain uh, pods because I told it to ignore daemon sets. And, and now I don't have any workloads really running on my system right now, so it didn't really do a whole bunch. But I do want to observe a couple things. Control. So it does a couple things when it does this. Cube control. Uh, get describe. I think describing it will do it. Node. And then. This should be, if you look at your uh, taints right here. So in addition to forcing off the pods, right, it also um, set this uh, couldn't net, it cannot schedule any additional um, pods going. So he, in this current state, the, um, the node is essentially unschedulable. In fact, you can see it says unschedulable right here. So which means if you try to schedule something right now, it's not going to, it's not going to get pushed onto this uh, node. Okay. Uh, okay, let's make sure I didn't miss anything here. No paint. Oh, right. So the next thing you want to do, if I can find those instructions, right. Um, this is basically a check to see what the upgrade will look like. It's sort of just telling you what it's going to do. It's the plan step. So we're going to run it real quick. It's checking in your cluster, seeing what's up. Now, right now, it's basically saying that I'm already upgraded, so there's nothing to do. So obviously I'm not gonna I'll be able to do an upgrade, right? But if you were, if there was an upgrade available, it would tell you what was available. And then what you do is you run a command like this, cube, cube ADM upgrade, apply, and then you apply it to the version that you wanna to upgrade to. And this will basically run through and upgrade your the control plane, it'll just upgrade the one control plane essentially, okay. Um, now, actually, while I'm thinking about this, I just thought of something. Before you do an upgrade, one of the things that you highly are recommended to do is read the release notes for that uh, that version of Kubernetes to make sure that you know you're not still using any deprecated APIs. They'll give you a list of all the things they're deprecating or any of the breaking changes, and you need to kind of vet your all your cluster you know resources to make sure that um, you're not going to break your cluster. And, and ideally, you, you actually have multiple environments so that you're not running this in production the first time. But that's a side note. Okay, back to this. Um, another thing, once you upgrade the cluster, they talk about all these add-ons too, because all of this upgrade does is touch the, the core control plane elements. It doesn't go through all of your add-ons, including your networking, your know, CNI, your um, pod networking plugin, right? And it's your responsibility to see what additional upgrades you need to do on an add-on by add-on basis. Okay, so after you do all that and you think your cluster is fine, then what you're going to do is you're going to do what's called uncoordinating it, which basically releases it to um, be schedulable again. So um, 
Let's see. What you're going to do is you're going to do paste, and then you're going to uncompute this. Oh, man. Okay. Uncore done. Hang on. I want to type paste. And then what that'll do is um, if you look at the node, it marks it schedulable again. I can find it. There it is. So it's unschedulable is false, which means it's schedulable. And you notice it's, it doesn't have that taint that was added. Now this, if you recall though, this taint, and there is a taint still left on here because I never, um, in this case, I've never changed it so that my master node could actually be used to schedule like normal workloads. Um, and uh, that's why this is here. If you want to one, you know, if you want to run uh, your normal like workloads on your master node, you would then just get rid of this taint and then you can, it would work fine. It's probably not a great idea because now you've got your, you know, your control plane running on the same box that you're running your other workloads. It just doesn't seem like a good practice. Okay, let's continue. Um, okay, so from here, the, the um, and this is mostly just talking here. So the next steps, I mean, it's a fairly long document, but oh, actually, they actually tell you right here. So the next thing you want to do is, I'll just kind of walk you through this then. Um, you've done the one control plane, right? Now you need to do the whole process for each additional control plane you have. Now, in our case, we only have one control plane, so that's fine, right? Um, and, but you do a slightly different command when you, you know, finally do the upgrade. Um, you, you use upgrade node as opposed to what we were using before, which was apply, upgrade apply, okay? Um, and then once you get that done, you need to upgrade kubelet and cube control on all the control planes, okay? And there's instructions on how to do that, right? And you restart kubelet. And then you got to turn your attention to each of the worker nodes. And the recommendation is you do a rolling update one at a time, right? And you basically do the similar things. You basically, you upgrade cube ADM on it. You drain the node. Um, right, then you, then you update the node itself with the upgrade node, right? Then you have to manually upgrade kubelet, kubelet control and then I believe you encord the node and then you go on to the next node. So, so the steps are pretty well outlined here, right? And uh, that's basically it for that. Um, sure. Right. Um, Oh, okay, a couple other things. Okay, one, one is, uh, it's mentioned, you know, we've mentioned it before quickly, but one of the things you need to do on a regular basis is upgrade your TLS certificates or renew them for like, like there's like a lot of certificates you use in the control plane, right? And they expire in one year from the time they're created. And the idea is one benefit of doing regular updates is that when you do an upgrade, it also updates all those certificates. So the idea is if you're regularly updating your cluster, then you will probably not never need to, um, which is probably a good practice anyway, you'll probably never need to manually upgrade those certificates. So that's one side benefit of doing regular upgrades other than just being safe and secure, right? Um, now, another thing is there are, there's a section, and I'm not gonna go through great detail, but there are some temp files that are created during the upgrade process should all heck break loose, right? And there's basically a backup of your database, which ironically enough, we would have already, it's not a snapshot, it's like a, this, in this case, it's actually a file that um, you can get after, right? And restore back to a certain file location, but it is your Accenture database. And then it also backs up something called the manifests. Now, one thing I did want to glance at, this whole manifest thing, which is interesting. Let's look at one folder here. Okay, there's a folder here called Etc. Kubernetes Manifests. 
And this kind of caught my attention. What's in here is on the on the um, control plane node, right? If you if you look carefully at actually we can look at it here. Cube control get all um, all namespaces. You will see here that you have certain um, pods running. For example, this picked the cube API server itself, right? You see it's running, but if you look down below, you will see no daemon sets, no deployments, or replica sets for that matter, having to do with that. So I was wondering, well, how, how does Kubernetes know to run this one? And how does it know to run X editor D, right? And it turns out, interesting enough, this folder right here, um, this is actually, these are just, I bet you if I just look at these, oh, oh no, not my folder. Mm. Right, so this is basically describing the QB, QB, uh, Cube API server right here. This is basically what causes this is actually the configuration file that drives Cube API server on this um, this, um, this 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 node, this um, control plane node. So that was just an interesting sidebar. Okay, I think a little bit rambly, but I think we've covered everything we covered. So as a recap, again, we basically talked about how to tell what the current version is. We took we looked at EKS and realized that it's a turnkey kind of operation. We did look at backup and restore, and then um, we went through just kind of a walkthrough of what uh, an upgrade of Q, uh, a cube ADM installed 